Uh, we're going to be talking about bearing uh, good fruit. And Daniel talked a little bit about some of that there as he was, if you, if you caught some of the Brit Hadashah readings this morning. And so I don't have a long word, but I really feel like it's a very important word. Um, you know, I don't know what you ate for breakfast this morning. That's really none of my business. Uh, but you know, one morning Messiah and, and his disciples, he was going to eat a fig uh, from a fig tree. And to, to me, it just sounds like something good and healthy to eat. Um, and, but there was no fig trees. And, uh, you know, you kind of wonder, was he, he must not have been a morning person. You know, he, he spoke to the tree and said, no one is ever going to eat fruit from you ever again. It's basically paraphrased. And uh, later, as they passed by there, just within a, just within a day's time, that, that tree uh, died. I mean, it was like dead. So apparently before it had some green on it. And I, I don't know uh, the exact scenario, the exact situation. To me, I picture it you know, the leaves all turned black or they fell off or something, you know, it was significant enough that it caught their attention like, wow, you know. So uh, to me, just that there in and of itself is really kind of telling us a lesson that, that, that Messiah wants to see fruit. And we're going to see throughout some of the texts of the scripture that that fruit is so important. Uh, so first of all, we're just going to look here in the word of God in Deuteronomy. We'll see if my clicker is going to work this morning. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse number 20. You must follow that which is altogether just or righteous so that you may live and inherit the land which you and Hevav hey Elohecha is giving you. So Israel was commanded uh, and told them they had to follow that which is just, that which is correct. And so, and that's not according to man. It's important that we understand the heart of God because everybody's got opinions. And sometimes we even have multiple opinions. And, and sometimes our opinions just, they're, they're not very good. I'll be honest with you. And, and sometimes in a crowd, you've got all kinds of opinions. And it's not important that we, we, we focus on our opinion but uh, especially when we're following something, you know, we may be following someone's opinion. And, and you know, maybe later we may realize, kind of like Paul, uh, I mean, he was so zealous for what he believed to be right uh, to the point where he was putting believers in prison and even seeing them be killed until he realized that he was going the wrong direction. He was following what he thought to be just and righteous, but it wasn't the right thing. And so there are people like that. I've met some. I've even been there myself uh, in stages of life, in seasons where, I mean, I thought I was following that which was right. And, um, and I've seen people do that. I mean, just with all the zeal that they can muster, they think they're following that which is right. Um, and, and really, they're, they're not. And they're in great error. God is so merciful, though. God is so gracious. He still loves them uh, beyond what any human could probably look at and love. Uh, in spite of us and our ignorance and many times our wrong directions, uh, God is always there and he's always wanting to reveal to us the right direction to go. And as we go that right direction, things just go better. And so sometimes if things aren't going that well, we can't judge our life by that. Sometimes it just happens. You remember Paul when he got bit by the poisonous snake? And the natural assumption was, well, he must be a murderer for that to have happened to him. He must be a bad dude. He must be a bad person. That's just, you know, uh, that it, uh, it catches up to you. Well, as he shook the snake off into the fire and whatever, suffered no harm, they came to the next conclusion. Well, he must be a superhero. He must be a god. You know, and so, I mean, from one extreme to the other, that's human nature. Uh, but, but it wasn't either. I mean, it wasn't either one. He wasn't a god. I mean, he was a son of God. But, but, and he wasn't a murderer, so to speak. That wasn't why that happened to him. But going back to our story, there are times, though, when things do happen and it is because of our life choices. It is because maybe we're not following that which is correct. And we may need to step back and ask the Lord, Lord, is this really the correct path for me? Anyway, going on here, follow that which is altogether just and right. And we need to pray. Tell you what, the, the internet, the media is full of a lot of opinions. From my past studies, when I've studied things, and I, I have to be extremely careful when you're studying, especially religion. There's a lot more bad out there than there is good. I'll just be honest with you. At least from my searches, the searches that I've found, there's a lot more error than there is uh, the right stuff. 
And so you got to really weed through it. Sometimes the error sounds so religious. It sounds so good. I tell you what, the enemy, the adversary, whatever you want to call him, hopefully you don't call him anything, uh, uh, he knows the Bible. He probably knows it better than any of us and all of us put together. He can quote scripture. He quoted scriptures to Messiah whenever he tempted Messiah. So he can come as an, in the appearance of an angel of light. And, uh, you know, people mean well, but sometimes they just, uh, they're just wrong. Sometimes people are so sincere and so nice, but they may be sincerely wrong. And so I, I see people and things all the time that come across my path that are full of error. And so I just think God is so gracious. I'm not trying to be judgmental, but I just, I, I, of course, I, I have to look back at my life and, and remember all the error that I've had and probably still do have to some extent. It, it's always a process. I don't know that we ever arrive. I've, you know, what some people may say, I've finally arrived. I'm perfect and I know everything. You know, be careful. If that's a person you know, you might want to back up away from them. Six feet might be good, maybe even a little further away. Uh, the Bible says those that think they stand, take heed lest they fall. Yes, it's a continual growing, learning process all of our lives. And yes, we do learn and we do grow and we know things, but don't think that you know it all. Uh, uh, and be careful that you don't think you know, you know, uh, that you might be surprised at what God can show you. Good fruit comes when we follow that which is good, just, and righteous. Good fruit is important in our lives, and it does come about through many different ways. And we're going to talk about some of those ways this morning. This isn't all of the ways that it comes, but this is some of them. Good fruit comes when we follow that which is good. If we're not following that which is good, if we're following something that's inappropriate and unrighteous, I don't know that good fruit's going to come. Don't expect you to just be fruitful and bearing good fruit if you're uh, engaging in inappropriate behavior, feeding your mind with a bunch of junk, hanging around the wrong crowd. I don't know that you're going to bear good fruit. It may be just the opposite. Uh, sometimes when you hang around the wrong group, you reflect that group. Sometimes when you feed yourself off of inappropriate things, that's just going to, you know, if you're out in the sun too long, you're going to get sunburned unless you protect yourself. Uh, so I mean, if you play in the dirt, you're likely going to get dirty. So uh, same scenario. Listen to what the psalmist says. I believe this is David. And I like, song, I like a lot of the psalms. They're songs that were sung here in uh, Psalm 1, verse 2 and 3. <clears throat> but his delight... Pleasure is in the law, the Torah, the teaching of yud He vav He, And in his law, his teaching, his instruction, does he meditate? And part of the definition of meditate can mean to utter, ponder, to study, day and night. Tell you what, this person just didn't let it rest. You ever see somebody and they just didn't let something rest? And, and uh, that they took the word of God and just, just pondered it, studied it, thought about it, uh, uh, quoted it, just verbalized it over and over. I mean, uh, there's no, I uh, just day and night. Uh, and it wasn't a, tr a, a drudgery. It wasn't uh, something they had to do. Now you have to do this or else. Uh, but his delight, it was a pleasure. And that's important that we need to pray that God helps us to delight in him and in his words, that it's a delight, that it's a pleasure. And if it's not, we need to make some adjustments somehow, somewhere, so that his word is, is a delight, it's a pleasure for us, that we enjoy hearing his word. He goes on to say here in verse three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That sounds pretty good. It, it, it's a tree. It's like a tree either by the water or in the water. You ever see a tree that was actually in the water? <laughs> I mean, it's like you don't have to water it. It's just continual water. I've seen trees that were kind of in either rivers or lakes, and they're like, I don't know how it happened, but they're in the water. And so, uh, you know, if the tree doesn't get enough water, it's likely to die. But this is... Uh, those that delight in the Lord and in his words, they'll be like a tree, very fruitful, that will bring forth his fruit in his season. There are seasons, you know, if you have a fruit tree, that doesn't mean that tree is going to bear fruit all year round. Uh, if you go to the grocery store, there may be times and seasons where that grocery store doesn't have fruit because it's not the season. 
There may be seasons where there are certain kinds of fruit in abundance and other seasons where it's not. Uh, whether it's just that season or it's just a dry season. <clears throat> so it's important for us to realize also that we go through seasons. But if it's the right season, then we'll bring forth fruit. We may be thinking, I'm just not bringing forth any fruit right now. Well, it just may not be the right season. That doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you're not fruitful, but it just may mean that, that God's preparing you, that, that you need to rest right now, that you need to recuperate, that, well, I don't know, just ask the Lord what may be happening, why maybe there's just not fruit that you may be thinking that should be there. Now, bearing good fruit does come when we delight in, depend on, and devour the Word of God. I don't know if you've ever been hungry. And maybe some of you are hungry right now. You know, sometimes when people are hungry, their stomachs gurgle and growl. And sometimes that can be embarrassing, especially if you've got a loud growler. Uh, maybe some of you don't, but some people have a louder growler stomaching than others. <clears throat> and so sometimes you can just hear that, you know, I mean, it just kind of makes that. Uh, there's been times when I was with my wife and we, uh, we heard it where we were like, was that you or was that me? You know, I was like, I don't, I think that was me. Usually you can tell, but sometimes that question, was that you or me? Um, it's important that we hunger for the word of God, that, that our spirits are, are growling for more of the word of God, that we don't become uh, 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 content to a certain level. If you know what I'm saying, that we, we, we take it and, and we devour it. You know, sometimes young believers in their zeal of learning because they don't know much, and they read and they study and they learn and it's wonderful and, and, and they need to. But sometimes people that have been around the block a few times, sometimes people that have known the Lord for a while, like some of us probably in this room, including myself, uh, we've been through that stage and we have to be careful. You remember sometimes the teenage stage, oh, I know everything. I know more than my dad and my mom, and I pretty much just know everything. Of course, today's world, they have Google, and, and, and okay, well, what do you need? What do you need? Uh, what's the question? Oh, I, I can find you the answer in like two seconds flat. <clears throat> and, it, you know, sometimes uh, we kind of carry that over into the spiritual realm, thinking that somehow that, that in our spirits, we can know God through Google, and we cannot. Google is not God, and you cannot know God through Google. Uh, you cannot learn some of the things that I'm taught. You can't bear good fruit by just staying on Google or, or whatever you get on all day long. You can learn some things, and yes, they are tools that you can search, and I understand that, and, and sometimes they are very beneficial. But there's nowhere in the Bible where it talks about things of that nature. <clears throat> when we devour the word of God. When we get back to that hunger <clears throat> that we might have had as a young believer, when we get back and not think that we know it all and we just want to spend time with the Father uh, be because we know that we need Him. Sometimes after that teenage know-it-all years, they finally realize that, you know, I don't know it all. And sometimes they go through a, a few little sessions of the school of hard knocks and they realize, well, you know, maybe mom and dad knew more than I gave them credit for. Anyway, uh, going on with life here, and hopefully they go on and communicate with their parents and honor them. But when we delight in, depend on, and devour the word of God, even no matter our, what our spiritual age is, it will help us to be fruitful. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Don't you like that word? It's profitable. It's beneficial for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. It's all good for us. It helps us. <clears throat> How is that? It helps us that the man or woman of God may be perfect, complete, proficient, thoroughly furnished, outfitted, equipped unto all good works. And part of the idea is that they'll be fruitful. So uh, the word of God helps us to be fruitful. The word of God in our hearts, in our minds, on our lips, in our lives brings about bountiful, blessed fruit. 
And we could read that over and over and over again. So uh, uh, that's kind of the first part of what I'm mentioning here and what I believe God's saying. And that is that fruit can come uh, uh, through uh, the word of God as we nurture it, as we hunger for it, as we meditate on it. And again, not in a legalistic religious fashion, but as a child hungers, uh, as your stomach hungers, as, as a child in a relationship that's dependent upon their parent uh, for everything we need to be dependent upon the word of the Lord. We should never be to the Lord and say, God, I know it all. I don't need your help anymore. We're on dangerous territory. If we thank God, I just know everything. I don't even need to ask you anything anymore. Thank you so much for all your help. I'm going on with my life. We're like the prodigal son. Just, I mean, going down the wrong path and don't go that way. Moving on here, Deuteronomy 18, 15. Yud heh vav heh, yeh heh we elohecha will raise up for you a prophet from the midst of you, of your brothers like me. And uh, you must listen to him. I don't have this written here this morning, so uh, what I'm about to read to you. So you're just going to have to take my word for it, unless you have a Bible and you can just open it up real quick. I'm not going to have this on the screen. <sighs> this kind of came later, and I'm like, oh, I need to make sure that I read this. So bear with me as I read the scripture here this morning. Uh, and it's coming from the book of Acts, chapter 3. So just, just listen. This was Peter preaching. Repent and turn again from your sins that your sins may be blotted out. Uh, that times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. That hopefully will sound familiar to you. Acts chapter 3. That he may send Messiah Yeshua who was ordained for you before. And uh, he, he goes on and then, uh, and then what I'm about to read to you is Acts 3.22. Moses indeed said this to the fathers. The Lord God will raise up a prophet for you from among your brothers like me. You shall listen to him in all things whatever he says to you. It will be that every soul that will not listen to that prophet will be utterly destroyed from among the people. Wow. Oh, so I'm going back here. Uh, here's Moses saying, the Lord God is going to raise up a prophet like you and you must listen to him. And then there in Acts chapter 3, Peter's uh, speaking prophetically saying, and Moses said this, and if you don't listen to him, you're going to be destroyed. That's pretty strong. And that is the word of the Lord for whoever it may be. I don't care how much of the word of God you know. And you memorize and meditate on, if we don't have Messiah, uh, it, it, that you're just being religious. Messiah is really the key. That prophet, of course, that Mos Mos Moses spoke of that we are to listen to, of course, is the Messiah, Yeshua. Whether you believe that or not, and we pray that you will believe and or one day will grab hold of that belief. Uh, some believe it, some don't. And those that don't, uh, may God have mercy on them. May they believe before they die. Abiding and believing in Messiah has everything to do with abounding and bearing good fruit. If you want to bear good fruit, that's true fruit, that God's going to be pleased with, it, it can only come by abiding and abiding in and believing in Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua. We can also remember that God still does have other prophets today. We need to look to, listen to apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. <clears throat> These is the fivefold ministry. Uh, there's other people that are out there ministering that have different titles, bishop or reverend uh, or whatever. There's just a lot of different kind of titles of people that are, are ministering and teaching the word of God. And we can learn from some of those that God has called. <clears throat> And it's important that we, we're open and, and there may be different seasons where we're learning from certain people because of their style or their personality. And then God may move us on because he says, okay, you've kind of learned what I had for you here. I'm going to move you on uh, for the next stage of your life. <clears throat> Faithfully assembling of the saints, listening and learning from others, taking and making time for reading the word worship and prayer will help bring about good fruit. So don't think, well, I'm beyond that. So I've seen people that did that. Well, you know, I don't go to an assembly anymore. I'm, I'm beyond that. I, I pretty much, and we've had people come through here like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't go there anymore because I'm pretty much smarter than anybody there. We, we had a guy that used to come here and, and he, he, he just came kind of fresh out of, I, he wasn't really in a Bible college. He wasn't really in a congregation. He was here for a very short time, but it was, that was kind of the, almost the attitude. 
I'm kind of beyond everybody there. I pretty much know everything and I know more than anybody there. So I'm just going to kind of move on. And that's a dangerous place to be. <clears throat> Faithfully assembling of the saints, a gathering and learning and encouraging, listening from others. I know sometimes with the COVID, there are people that gather at home because of a weak immune system or whatever their situation may be. But there are still ways around that. That's why we're kind of doing live streams so that hopefully we can still kind of assemble in a certain way. Uh, listen to what Messiah says, and he says some very strong words, and I want us to take heed to them this morning. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 19. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. He's not talking about literal trees here. Messiah is not against trees. But he's talking about humans. He's talking about people. And he's comparing us to trees and uh, talking about us being fruit. So there's really only two choices here that are mentioned. It's either fruit or fire. And there's really nothing in between just in this setting of what he's talking about. It's either fruit or fire. Uh, Messiah said, therefore, by their fruit, you shall know them. In that particular context, he's talking about false prophets, uh, how you shall know them and things of that nature. Uh, it's important that we stay clear even in our Torah portion. He, uh, in the word of God here, he strongly uh, uh, speaks against witchcraft and, and false prophets and, and sorcery and all kind of demonic things that he wants Israel to stay clear from because that's not going to help them to bear fruit. It'll actually hinder their fruit. Uh, listen to what it says here in Deuteronomy, uh, uh, talking about Israel and just their army and, and kind of the idea of when they go out to attack some of their enemies. Deuteronomy 20, 19. When you lay siege to a city for a long time in making war against it in order to take it, you shall not destroy the trees whereby chopping them down with an axe, for you may eat from them. And you shall not cut them down, for the tree of the field is not a man in which to lay siege. So he's saying there, if there's a tree that's bearing fruit that you can eat from, don't cut it down. Deuteronomy 20.20 20 here. Uh, However, you may destroy and cut down only the trees which you know are not fruit trees, so that you may build siege uh, engines uh, uh, against the city that make war with you until it falls. So in essence, what he's saying there is he's saying that good fruit trees are not to be cut down or destroyed, but unfruitful trees are to be axed, chopped, cut down and destroyed or used or whatever there would, whatever the case is. So he's very clear on that. And again, it's symbolic of, of the people of God, of, of God's people. Messiah said this uh, uh, in John 15, he says uh, uh, some great things all throughout the text, but uh, uh, John is, is unique in all of the gospels. He's one of the most unique uh, as far as his perspective and kind of how he, he dialogued and wrote things out. This is what he records as, as Messiah saying, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So Messiah, he prunes, he purges, he cuts, he cleans, he trims us away so that we may bear more fruit. That's kind of this idea. So there are times, and I don't know if you've ever pruned something, if you ever cleaned up a tree or a bush. It's a process. Uh, it gets messy. There's some cleanup involved. But when you're done, it looks better and the tree probably feels better, I guess, if it can feel anything. Uh, you know, it, it, it helps to, with the process and sometimes it's necessary for the, the production of the tree for whatever it may be. There's a process of doing all this. Uh, Messiah, Messiah kind of goes on the idea, especially with the definition of being clean. He says there, you were already clean through the word which I've spoken to you. Through the word, the living word of Messiah helps to cleanse us, to, to prune us. Now, Messiah says this, and this is so important, <clears throat> remain in me, and I also remain in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. There's just a process of this word remaining, remaining. So, you know, I was born again a long time ago, October the 8th, 1978. Back, you probably remember, I don't know, I don't think any of you were there, but I remember very clearly. 
and, and so back in October the 8th, 1978, I gave my life publicly to Messiah. And, and, uh, but it didn't end there. I made a decision, and every day I have to maintain <clears throat> that decision. I have to remain in Him and Him close to me. Remain in me, and I also remain in you. Now, we cannot bear fruit on our own. A branch by itself can do nothing unless it is attached to the tree. If you cut a branch off, <clears throat> it's going to die. Uh, the, uh, it's going to wither. If we truly know Messiah, we're going to know fruit. We'll see fruit. If there's no Messiah in our life, there will be no fruit. Simple as that. Listen to what uh, Messiah says here in John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me. So without Messiah... We can do nothing. Uh, kind of what Dr. Daniel had mentioned, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit uh, helps to produce fruit uh, that we read about. And of course, we don't have access to the Holy Spirit unless we first uh, have Messiah. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not just poured out on, on, on unbelievers. But, but usually the idea is that, that the process is you believe in Messiah first. You get filled with the Holy Spirit who empowers you. <clears throat> so, uh, but w initially though here in this setting, without Messiah, we can do nothing. If he's not the center, if we're not remaining attached to him in a strong, living, valid way, then, then don't think we're going to be bearing fruit. Now listen to what he says here. I mean, he, he, he just spells it out. If a person, if a man does not remain in me, he is thrown out as a branch and withers. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. There's a lot of different ways to, I guess, define what's taking place here. And I'm not going to try to define it for you. Uh, but just looking a little bit at what's being said here, though, nonetheless, if a man does not remain in me. So, so apparently... There is the ability to not remain in him. Apparently, if he's warning us of this, then this is a legit thing that can happen. Well, because uh, some people kind of have the idea that, you know, once you receive Messiah, I mean, you're going to be in him no matter what you do or say. And I mean, it, I mean, you're like saved forever. Praise the Lord. Let's go party hardy. It's almost kind of the idea, you know, like, oh my gosh, you're, you're like saved forever. Praise the Lord. Sometimes people really emphasize that and focus that, which, I mean, there, there's a, a certain aspect of it that we need to grab hold of and understand God's grace and mercy and his power and his faithfulness. Uh, how a lot of it has nothing to do with us that, that we had just read, that without Messiah, we can do nothing. So it's, it's not about us. It's not about how good we're doing or, 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 or that nature. But yet at the same time, if we don't remain in him, some people say, well, they were never in him to begin with. Well, that's not what he says. I remember as I backslid as a believer, <clears throat> people may say, well, you know, he was never really born again to, to begin with. Well, I, I beg to differ. I know for a fact I was born again when I backslid for a, a year or so as a teenager and I wasn't serving the Lord. I know that, that I, I was a legit born again person. So that, that, I think we can throw that out with the water, that, that doctrine. Well, they were probably never born again because if they were, that wouldn't have happened. No, people backslide all the time, every day, unfortunately, but it's just a legit thing. If a man does not remain in me, or are you in him? Or are you remaining in him? If a man does not remain in me, and I don't know what the time frame is here. God is merciful. God is gracious. God gives us multiple chances. But apparently at one point in time, there's a line that's drawn. And then at that point, he's thrown out as a branch and withers. And uh, they gather them and throw them into the fire. That doesn't sound too good. Thrown into the fire and burned. And apparently this is talking of a person that was at one point in time in Messiah. If a man does not remain in me, you have a choice to choose Messiah and then to remain in him. The choice is either bearing fruit or burning. 
It's either fruit or fire. It's either Messiah or misery. And there's, that's your choices. Well, I don't like those choices. Well, that's, that's it. That's what you got. It's either Yeshua is Lord or, or, or that's it. It's either God's way or it's no way or, or it's, it's the highway. It, it, it's, it's taken out of the picture. It's so important that, that we're fruitful as a believer. That, that, that there's some evidence that we're truly a believer. You know, we, we don't want, I don't want to be doing your funeral one day and, and then be saying, you know, I don't, I don't really don't know if that person was a believer or not. We just hope for the best. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd rather be there and say, I mean, there was no doubt beyond anybody's mind. This was a believer. Uh, I remember at my dad's funeral, my dad had passed away back in 83. So he, he's been gone for a while. But I remember at his funeral, uh, one of the ministers, uh, uh, as, as they were, you know, preaching and things of that nature, uh, he had said that he felt like that, that my dad's life was one of the most Christ-like life of a person that he had ever seen. And so I was just a teenager at the time, but I just remember that, you know, his life reflected something. So uh, even there, they're like, and, and even in my dad's death, there were people <clears throat> that gave their lives to the Lord because of his witness. And uh, even in his death, it affected people and brought fruit even after he died. Even after uh, uh, he died, he, he was hit by a car, kind of that type of thing. He, he died prematurely in his early 40s. But, but when he died, some of the people that he worked with, it, it, it struck them. And, and, you know, so, so, I mean, of course, later, and, that, and of course, the Bible talks about that. Sometimes there may be fruit that's going to come even after you die. Uh, you know, sometimes that's going to depend on how you lived. Some fruit's going to come now, and some fruit may come when you die or after you die. It's kind of like the seed. It's just a dead seed. But when you put it in the ground, it comes back to life. <clears throat> To live is Christ, to die is gain. It's gain for us and it may be gain for others because your life inspired them. Stephen, who was the first martyr, uh, I believe his life and even his death inspired many others. Maybe even was a motivation and kind of a springboard for Paul, who later was saved and, and, and he witnessed Stephen's death, was right there when it happened. He witnessed Stephen's witness and Stephen's heart and, 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 and the power of God that was present there. I'm sure that it affected him tremendously. And so I encourage you to bear good fruit. You're not here just to occupy space. You're not here just to keep six feet apart from people. You're not here just to warm a pew. You're not here just to, to burn, uh, uh, you know, whatever it may be. You know, you have a real purpose. And, and part of your purpose uh, that God wants you is to have fruit, to be fruitful. Don't be judgmental of me. I won't be judgmental of you. Oh, I think this person needs more fruit. Well, we probably all do. And so I'll work on my fruit and you work on yours. And God will be the judge of all of us one day. But, uh, but, you know, you examine your fruit, I'll examine mine. You do what you need to do and I'll do what I need to do. But we'll all encourage one another, you know. And, and, uh, and again, there are many things we can do that uh, hinder our fruit that we need to avoid and recognize. And there are many things that we can do to help our fruit. And so uh, just be aware of that in your life. And, and I encourage you today, as, as I kind of come to a close of this, be fruitful. To the best that you feel like God can do in your life, be fruitful. Uh, again, uh, just your lip service is great. But if there's no fruit, uh, the Bible is very clear about what's going to happen to those people that don't remain in Messiah. Those people that don't maintain faith in him. Those people that don't have that, that, that living relationship with him are those people that did, but they don't remain. Those people that knew the way of righteousness, but then turned from it. The Bible says it'll be even worse off for them if they had never known. It would have been better for them to have never known, for them to have known and then to have turned from it. Dangerous place to be, backslidden place. And if I'm speaking to any backsliders out there today, the Lord's just saying, come back home. The Lord's just saying, it's not too late. Uh, come back, repent, and get your heart right uh, while they've still got some time. Uh, the backslidden is a miserable place, and uh, it's not a fruitful place. And you might say, oh, I just backslid a little bit. Oh, I backslid a lot. And there are different degrees and levels of being backslidden. And so don't compromise and think, oh, I'm okay. Well, you know, I know what I'm doing. Me and the Lord got it going on. Well, be careful. 
Uh, we want to look out for the best interest of you. Sometimes it's obvious. We're like, oh yeah, that person's out there. Sometimes it's not so obvious because we still come in here and, and still got the looks going on and the talk. Praise the Lord. Baruch Hashem. I mean, we can still got, you know, uh, whatever it may be, we may look like we're still got it going on, but somewhere in here, it ain't going on anymore. And, and somewhere, you know, we're missing it. Somewhere we've fallen back. And the Lord knows. We may not know. You may be looking more religious than anybody in the room. I mean, you may, may be looking more zealous, but the Lord knows your heart. And he knows your fruit, your true fruit. And, uh, you know, in these day and age, we got plastic fruit that people make that almost looks real. You ever see some of that plastic, just fake fruit? And so don't don't try to put fake fruit before the Lord. Uh, it's not going to work. Don't try to be a fake believer just to fake somebody out. You definitely can't fake out the Lord. Uh, you can come in here and we're still going to love you and God loves you, but just know that, that it will catch up to you. If you're playing games with God, be careful because uh, uh, it, we're living in serious, sober times and God wants your heart. He wants your life. Why don't you stand? I'm going to go ahead and close out and uh, thank you for your attention as we close out this morning's service and things get uh, uh, shifted and getting ready for the next service later on here in a few hours. We thank and we praise you, Lord God Almighty. We thank you for fruit. We pray in the mighty name of Messiah Yeshua that you will help us to be fruitful and more fruitful. We just invite you, Messiah, to come and prune us that we may bear more fruit. Sometimes the pruning process may not be fun, but it is needed. It is necessary. Lord, sometimes those dead leaves or dead branches, whatever it may be, that is just there occupying space and time, Lord, that shouldn't be there. Help us to get rid of it. Help us to recognize it. Lord, some of that deadness in our life, help us to get rid of it. Help us to see it for what it is. And help us, Lord God, to breathe life again into these trees that you're calling trees. Let these trees bear fruit. Let your people be fruitful, I pray, Abba Adonai, in Yeshua's name. And we thank you. We just exalt you this morning, dear Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We just say, Yeshua, you are Lord. You are Messiah. You are Savior. Come into our hearts, come into our lives. Help us, Lord, to know you, to serve you, to maintain you as the Lord of our lives, to be in you and to remain in you. Without you, Messiah, we can do nothing. We just pray, Messiah, come and ever so more live in and through us. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to know, Lord, that well, through him, Messiah, we can do all things. And Lord, help us to know that he's here with us. He wants to help us. He's an ever-present help in time of need. And we exalt you today. We thank you, Lord. We trust you for good fruit. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. If we're in a season where there's not fruit, help us to be patient. Help us to plant seed. Help us to water. Help us to just uh, uh, to rest, Lord, in the light of your Son. Lord, and to breathe in your presence and your spirit, knowing that fruit will come if we're going in the right direction. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you.